1964, 500 steam railway enthusiasts could still take a trip of 2,500 miles around the whole of Ireland. But this was a romantic exercise in nostalgia. The diesel engine had been taking over, and steam was virtually obsolete. And with increasing competition from road haulage and private cars, many of the lines would disappear too. Over a hundred diesel locomotives had been imported in the 50s. Now there was a further order from General Motors in the United States. In the CIE works at Inchicore, the long tradition of building engines was over. The diesels appealed to the new Irish taste for modernization. But they also made economic sense. They didn't take nearly as long to warm up, they didn't need to be fed coal and water, the fuel was cheaper, and they massively reduced the manpower overall. Economy was everything to Cordes Umpereven. Founded in the 40s as a nationalization of the earlier private companies, it now ran all the rail and most of the bus services within the Republic. The government had decreed it should learn to operate without state subsidy. That didn't happen anywhere else, and it would never be achieved here either. But it led CIE, under its chairman, Dr. Todd Andrews, to close many of the smaller railway lines. There was no great clamour at first. Then opposition grew, and communities around Ireland protested at the loss of their railways. But to no avail. In all, CIE closed 586 miles of track and over half of its stations. Another to go was the fabled West Clare Railway from Ennis to Kilrush and Kilkey, immortalised in the Percy French song, Are You Right There, Michael, Are You Right? last narrow-gauge train in Ireland, it ran for 50 miles through 21 stations. CIE said it was losing £23,000 a year. But the end of the West Clare Railway was in the true spirit of Percy French. Fearful of the crowds and souvenir hunters that might be attracted to make the sentimental journey, CIE cancelled the last train. So the last train was actually the one before. But if CIE was closing railways, it was also playing a leading role in the development of tourism. Its great southern hotels were then the best in Ireland outside of Dublin. And in the days before car hire and car ferries, CIE coaches provided the transport for overseas visitors. Killarney had been made famous by the visits of Walter Scott, the poet Lord Tennyson and Queen Victoria. In the late 50s, it was still the first choice in Ireland of big-spending American tourists. Also in the late 50s, CIE brought two cruisers from the River Thames to the Shannon to increase its range of attractions. Ireland was only beginning to realise the economic potential of tourism and to regard it as a product that required development and marketing. But under Dr. Tim O'Driscoll, Borth Fulcher began to produce results. In the 60s alone, tourism revenue increased almost threefold. <laughs> 